For the past couple of videos, I've done something a bit different. I've tried to be calmer, I've tried to swear less, I've pretty much been using the last couple of videos as an exercise in training for an upcoming job I have to uh, speak with a bit more care, to speak calmer, uh, to also train myself in audio editing because that's going to be an important part of this potential job that I may have in the future. And it's been a lot of fun, it's been really interesting, it's been kind of nice to go outside my comfort zone. But with the announcement of Young Justice Season 3, I cannot do such a thing because this announcement legitimately has ticked me off so, so very much. And so you will have good old-fashioned raging psychopath Ivan back and ready to tear everything you know and love to shreds with an honest-to-God psychopathic smile on his face. So Young Justice Season 3 has begun production. We don't know where it's going to air. We don't even know who necessarily is working on it besides the original creators and I guess Warner Brothers Animation. We don't know if it's going to be on Cartoon Network or on Netflix. Possibly, it, it, most likely it's going to be on Netflix because the recent Voltron reboot was highly successful for Netflix. In fact, it's so successful that they're already coming out of the second season just a few months after the first one ended. I don't know if they were working on these concurrently or Netflix is just that good at churning out content that fast. But regardless, Netflix has opened the floodgates for some good animation to come forward. And I'm not even going to say that Young Justice Season 3 is going to be bad for sure. It's just that where the series has been left off, both in terms of quality and, and the kind of fandom it's accumulated in the meantime, I am not particularly happy about the fact that we're going to get even more of this show. Now, if Season 3 is good, and I mean legitimately good, I will be, I'll probably be able to overlook a lot of the big glaring faults of Season 2 and possibly even t learn to tolerate the stupid fanfuck fandom that accompanies this show to a, probably a big degree. And Wiseman... And uh, Vietti, these guys have done some cool shit. They've done lots of good DC animation. They did a spectacular Spider-Man. And if Young Justice Season 2 was just a small fumble in their otherwise pretty solid track record, I'm going to, of course, I'm going to say that just Season 3 is good. It's good because of this and this and that. And I'm going to like the show if I think it's actually good or not. But just based on where the show left off and, and the kind of people that have just surrounding this series, I cannot help but just groan myself to death in, in hopes of just dropping dead before this shitstorm gets even worse. The Injustice fandom is a particular big point of contention for me when it comes to this show, and this is not even the show's fault necessarily. This is a fault of Western animation fans in general, because Western animation fans, they pretty much work like a dictatorship. They decide collectively, well, they're like a collective dictatorship of lots of elitist fuckwads who will come together and they will decide this is awesome, this is perfect, and if you don't like it, you need to be burned at the stake, or this is complete daughter shit because we say it is, and then you will also be burned at the stake. So, if I say that I love the first two, the second and third season of Avatar The Last Airbender, but I think that season one is quite a bit weaker than what came after it, with the exception of the fantastic finale for that book, I'm probably going to get burned at the stake because I do not think that Avatar The Last Airbender is amazeballs the greatest thing ever besides all these other greatest things ever this dictator, this collective dictatorship has decided upon. I'm going to be burned at the stake. Same thing with, uh, I don't know, The Simpsons. Uh, I've seen a few reruns of the newer Simpsons episodes and I found them quite funny. I found myself really enjoying them. But because these fanfuck assholes have decided that The Simpsons are shit after season 8 or 9 or 10. I don't know which one specifically, but it's usually one, one of the three that I just named. I'm gonna get burned at the stake. So, there is no middle ground with these motherfuckers. Everything is either the worst thing ever or the greatest thing ever, and they all blindly, collectively just decide on these things without actually sometimes even watching them and just deciding, nope, this is the greatest thing ever because of these fucking stupid arbitrary reasons that we're going to shove down your throat and, and we're going to make you abide by our rules and our consensus, or we're going to decide this is shit using that, that same consensus that we've come up with and reinforced by our rules. And so, fuck Western animation fans. Seriously, just fuck all of you elitist douchebags. I'm not even talking about the same people who are gonna 
who can actually like a show, but also make fun of it and also name its faults. And these are the reasonable people, the third minority group, what I like to call the Kanzenshu people, who can, you know, sit down and watch Young Justice and say, I really like this show, but this is fucking dumb, or this is ridiculous, or this is, or this is just nonsense, or maybe the show can improve in this and this and this way. I'm not talking about these people. These are the minority of sane people watching shows like Young Justice. My, my issues with, with uh, the majority of the fandom is that the, the loudest motherfuckers in the fandom are these obnoxious cuntbags who just need to drop dead, and, drop dead into a vat of acid, basically. But even barring my contempt for Western animation fans, and especially the Young Justice people who have just spent the past three or four years consistently bitching and moaning at every fucking opportunity about how Young Justice being cancelled is the worst thing to ever happen to the history of mankind, worse than the Holocaust, worse than the various other genocides that have happened, and Warner Brothers and DC and Cartoon Network are all worse than Mussolini, Hitler, and Genghis Khan combined for cancelling this fucking show. So yeah, fuck these people, they can go drop dead, and the fact that they're even getting more content, that alone pisses me off, because rewarding these motherfuckers would not be my mission statement. My mission statement with Young Justice, if I was in charge of Warner Brothers, would be a big, flaming, motherfucking middle finger burning in the sky perpetually aimed at this obnoxious fandom. But ignoring these assholes, we also have the problem of Season 2. Season 2 was not good. Season 2 had a central conflict that was easily some of the most boring shit I've ever seen in my life, an antagonist that could not be less compelling if you tried to make him less compelling. I've seen fucking Marvel villains who are more interesting than The Reach, and you know that the MCU bad guys are, majoritively speaking, not very good, but for fuck's sake, I can at least remember them, something about them, beside, which I can't say for The Reach. And it had a big, bloated cast that was just there for fan service. And I'm not even going to say that um, introducing a lot of new characters was a bad idea, because, well, it is kind of a bad idea because they just introduced so many of them, but the fact of the matter is that Young Justice Season 1's cast was a cast that I predominantly did not care for. I didn't care about Aqualad or Miss Martian or Superboy or Artemis. I still don't care about Wally. That's something the show was just not able to do. Uh, and I'm, and I'm going to get to Wally in a second. A Wall, it, what they do with Wally might be what decides if I think Young Justice Season 3 deserves existing or not, but I'm going to get to that later on. But my point is, I did not pred predominantly care about a large group of the cast, but they made me care. Like, I cared about Dick Grayson Robin. Um, I usually care about him more when he's like Batman or when he's Nightwing, but they managed to make me care about him as Robin. They did some really interesting shit with him, how, how he comes to the decision that he doesn't want to be like Batman, but then in season two, he does become like Batman. He does become like this guy who coldly manipulates his friends and allies for the sake of the overall mission, which is something he created Nightwing to specifically not be like Batman. And then you have Miss Martian, who has some of the who has probably one of the best character arcs in the show. You've got Calderon having to deal with the fact that Black Manta is his father and then acting as a double agent. Um, you have uh, Artemis also dealing with her past as like the child of two criminals and having to come to terms with that and having like a supervillain family all around her. It's compelling stuff. It was really, really good. And I didn't really know any of these characters beforehand, but I grew to really like them. And the fact that, and what helped the first season work as well as it did is because it kept the cast small. There were some additions later on, but it never got bloated. In season two, the cast does get bloated, and it just gets bloated for only, I can only really say for fan service sake, because. Why else are you going to bring Tim Drake in and then do nothing with him except for fan service? Same thing with Wonder Girl. Same thing with uh, Bart Allen and Blue Beetle. Well, Blue Beetle did get a lot of attention. I just didn't find it particularly compelling. But you get my point. Like, 90% of the new people that are brought in, they're just there for fucking fan service. They're basically just there for continuity blow hearts to go, Oh my god, Like this character exists in this universe. This is amazing. Because... That's how comic book fandom works now. It's all about fucking continuity. It's all about building the universe. It doesn't matter if the universe you're building is shit 
or you're doing a bad job of actually building the universe on actual merits like characterization, good storytelling. It's all just about cramming as much shit as we can because building the universe is the only thing we care about. But that's, I'm not going to get into that. That's just kind of a thing that's happening with comic book properties a lot. And Young Justice is probably one of the first big offenders because whenever I actually talk to anybody about the fact that the cast is bloated, they all just say, oh, well, Tim Drake exists. It, it doesn't matter that, that the show does fucking nothing with him to make me actually give a shit about him because he's my least favorite Robin out of them all. He exists and that's it. That's just it. It's all fucking fan service. And fan service doesn't even have to be bad. But you gotta do something with it. Don't just put some guy in there to get uh, fanboys' dicks hard or their, or their nipples hard in the case of women. Just do something with them. And it gets really obvious if you actually stop to think about who are the most important players in Young Justice Season 2. It's the old cast. Dig Grayson, uh, Wally West even, Calder, Miss Martian, uh, Superboy to a lesser extent, but he still gets some cool moments later on and how he's evolved from season one. They're the guys who are driving the, the plot on the side of the good guys. They're the guys who go through the most interesting changes. They're the guys who go through the most interesting conflicts in the show. So that just really makes me wonder, why did we even have a time skip? Like, why couldn't this just happen a few months to a year after season one with the same group of kids? Like, why did we need these new guys? These new guys don't do anything. They, they're just there for stupid fan service say they have they serve no practical purpose they're they're nothing they're window dressing um why not just focus on the season one cast they're the guys who are still getting the most interesting things to do so just remove these other fuckwads and just focus on these guys and that's pretty much where the season starts to break down you know just from the beginning but then we have uh, the reach like i said I don't care about the Reach. They're fucking boring villains. The whole shtick about uh, the, the 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 Justice League and the superheroes becoming distrusted by uh, by the people and the government and all that crap. The DC animated universe already did that better, and I, and I feel even bad saying that because the DC animated universe is just another one of those Western fan fuck things that is highly overrated. But the Cadmus arc did it a lot better because the Cadmus arc was built on previous events in the franchise. So when Superman was brainwashed by Darkseid and used to try to conquer the planet with him, that makes sense. That makes sense why people would be afraid of Superman, why there would be some paranoia about superheroes. And then when you factor in the Justice Lords, the fact superheroes are increasing in ever bigger numbers, that they have this big satellite in the sky, all these factors make sense for a Cadmus-type storyline, or at least a storyline where the public is starting to just distrust superheroes. But in Young Justice, there really is never an inciting incident like that. The Reach just show up, they're like, hey, superheroes fucking suck, and then everybody starts believing it, and then you've got G. Gordon Godfrey doing his best J. Jonah Jameson impression, where he's basically just fear-mongering people, and for some stupid reason, they listen to him. Like, what? where's the inciting incident here? Like, where's the moment where Superman blew up half a fucking country to make people afraid of superheroes? Like, where is the inciting incident? And just saying these guys have a secret satellite in orbit is not good enough for me. Just where's the inciting incident to make people afraid of superheroes? There isn't any. People are just afraid of superheroes right now because uh, we need them to turn on the heroes so the Reach looks good, so that we can have that generic reveal later on where, oh my god, you mean the benevolent alien visitors are actually lying dickwads? What? You know what I mean. It, it's, it, it, it's bad. I just don't care. And it gets really fucking dumb when you realize, why didn't they just use Dark Side? Why? In a, in a season called Young Justice Invasion, why isn't Darkseid the guy invading? And Apocalypse attacking Earth is infinitely more interesting. You, you'd have lots of really crazy Jack Kirby shit to play with. And that would have been awesome. That would have immediately made things really interesting and really threatening. And it would have been particularly interesting because this, the second season benched Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Uh, I'm pretty sure it benched a couple of Green Lanterns and Hawkgirl. So a lot of the big guns of the Justice League 
were benched. They were taken off the playing board. So imagine the scenario where Darkseid attacks the the, the strongest heroes of the Justice League are not on the planet to defend it. They're off on trial somewhere else. And then you just have the remainders of the League and Young Justice having to deal with Darkseid without, without Superman and Wonder Woman and Batman there to, you know, save the day. That would have been really awesome. And now we can't have that because we need stupid Blue Beetle shit. And like I said before, you could have made me care about Blue Beetle. I, I don't, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't care about many versions of Blue Beetle, but you could have made me care about him. But I just don't. The show doesn't do that. There's no moment where I'm like, yeah, I can get behind this guy. There's no moment where I, where I just sort of click with Blue Beetle and say, yeah, I can, I, I can get behind this guy. I can get behind this character. I can get invested in this guy. Let's see what you're going to do with him. There is no moment like that. I, I just do not give a fuck. Like, the closest time... I started to giving a fuck about Blue Beetle is when they started introducing like uh, different colored Blue Beetles. So, well, different colored Beetles, I should say. So yeah, Black Beetle, Blue Beetle, Green Beetle. And I was like, holy shit, are you gonna get Power Rangers with the Beetles? That's gonna be awesome. And because I like Power Rangers. I mean, it's fucking dumb, but it's so awesome. And so if, if the show gave us a Power Rangers version of the Beatles, 10 out of 10. I would have forgiven everything, and it would have been fucking awesome. But the show didn't do that, unfortunately. It just kept the Reach boring, Blue Beetle boring, and this whole plot line so, so uninteresting. But speaking of cool shit that could redeem everything, there's Wally West. So, fuck Wally West. Do not care for that guy at all. I was so happy when he dropped dead in season two, and I even read several forum posts concerning uh, fr from Greg Wiseman himself, where people were asking him, well, what happened to Wally? And Greg Wiseman on his blog or his forum or whatever, he has a policy of not revealing spoilers. So when people would ask him what happened to Wally, if it was a spoiler, he would just say, spoiler alert, can't, can't say, because he's always kind of held out hope for this universe consisting either in the form of a comic book or another show or a, or a movie or a video game, just continuing in some way, shape, or form, so he didn't just feel like revealing everything as, as though Young Justice would never come back, which is an admirable trait to have. And then when people would ask him what happened to Wally West, he's like, yeah, Wally's fucking dead. Like, Wally is gone. Uh, Wally's gone because the Speed Force does not exist in Young Justice, I believe. He even said that Wally, Barry, and Bart, they just run fast. There is no Speed Force. Like, he even said that he doesn't understand why you even have some kind of external energy source for a guy to run fast. Like, he just runs fast and that's it. So, if they stick to this, if they keep Wally dead, I will forgive everything season three does. I'll forgive its existence. I'll forgive its stupid fucking fan base. I'll forgive everything if they keep Wally dead. If they revive that motherfucker, I'm done. Dropping it, gonzo, just done. All hope is lost for the show, as far as I'm concerned, if Wally West comes back. So yeah, guys, that has been my resident rant. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, you probably didn't because... <laughs> Uh, the number of people who dislike Young Justice versus the people who like it is like uh, one million to one. But whatever. So if you guys are excited for season three, please promptly fuck off. I have no business talking with you people. But if you too are skeptical or just tired of this whole Young Justice bandwagon, please comment down and like in, this, in, in the comments below so we can talk and be cynical bastards together. It'll be a lot of fun, I promise.